Hey, good morning. It's great to welcome you here to our online service here with Chester Road Baptist Church. You are ever so welcome. If you are part of our regular growing community, hey, you're welcome. And if you stumbled across us via Google or you've received an invite from one of your friends, you are especially welcome. We are trusting that you find something helpful today in our service. Our fabulous worship team are going to be leading us in some uh, great sung worship. Join in, turn the volume up and get involved. Later on, we'll hear from Caris, our children and families worker. And then we're going to be wrestling with a big question. How do you link this with that? It's all about sideburns. It'll become clear soon. Just before we kick off, though, why don't you hit the share button and share it on your social media so that others can join with us right now in our worship together. Let's pray. God, we open ourselves to you today. Come by your spirit. Search our hearts and lead us back to you, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen.
collapses are fogging up. What? Oh, silly me. CRBC Community News. Bomb. That's better. Hello and welcome to CRBC Community News, bringing you news from the heart of the community. Haven't you missed me? Oh, we've got some exciting news this week. Today, Joy and Norman are celebrating their 23rd wedding anniversary. Hooray! Congratulations! They were married 23 years ago by Ken. That is such a lovely memory to have and we hope that you have an excellent day. Also this week, coming up next Saturday, we are relaunching Messy Church! Hooray! We'll be running Messy Church on the second Saturday of every month with a new time of 3pm until 4pm. We have space for about eight households. If you turn up and there's not space left, we will have packs to send you home with so that you can still do the activities and enjoy the fun of Messy Church in your own home as well. We hope that you'll be able to join us. If you want any more information, contact me, Cara Segner at chesterrobaptist.org.uk and I'll be in touch with you as soon as possible. Well, that's about it from me. It's a really exciting time with reopening different things, so keep your eyes peeled to see more of what's going on within the life of Chester Road Baptist Church. Hope to see you soon. Bye. CRBC Community News. Bom. Today's reading is taken from Matthew 5, verses 17 to 20. Teaching about the law. Do not think that I have come to do away with the law of Moses and the teaching of the prophets. I have not come away to do with them, but to make their teachings come true. Remember, as long as heaven and earth last, not the least point nor the smallest detail of the law will be done away with, not until the end of all things. So then, whoever disobeys even the least important of the commandments and teaches of us to do the same, will be least in the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, whoever obeys the law and teaches others to do the same, will be great in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you then, that you will be able to enter the kingdom of heaven only if you are more faithful than the teachers of the law and the Pharisees in doing what God requires. You've just caught me going off to play some rounders with my friends. I love rounders. So if anybody is ever up for a game of socially distanced rounders, you know where to find me. But anyway, imagine if rounders had no rules. Imagine if nobody threw the ball to the hit the bat. Imagine if you just had to go like this. Imagine if... There were no bases for you to run to. Imagine if you could, couldn't could actually get a rounder. Imagine if you could just play with one person. That would be really sad, wouldn't it? Well, I don't actually want to go and play rounders anymore. Let's go and play a bit of Jenga instead. Anybody else love playing a game of Jenga? I do. But imagine if Jenga didn't have any rules. You could do so many things like, oh, I could touch all of these to see which one will move easily. Or you could take two out at a time. Or it could just be so boring that actually you don't have any rules, so this is what Jenga is all about. That just takes away from the fun of it though. I always want to see who's going to be the one that knocks the tower down. It's never me. You know, we have rules for our country, for our world, for us. Perhaps at school you have rules. At the moment, we're having to follow by rules so that we can socially distance but still enjoy ourselves and go and do things. And we have rules to keep us safe. We have rules so that we can still have fun without getting hurt. 
we have rules because if we didn't, I think the world would be a little bit crazy, don't you? And Jesus says that whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus tells us that we need to live by these rules and our reward will be that we will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. How good is that? Sometimes we look at rules and think that they're really unfair. But maybe next time you go to play a game, try playing it without any rules. See what happens. I don't think I'm going to go and play rounders by myself without any rules. I don't think that would be very fun, would it? Well, your activity for this week is to come up with a game that has no rules. Yeah. What game could you come up with that has absolutely no rules? Have a go and see what you can think of. And then if you get really stuck, invent a game with some rules and play it with the people that you're with at home. I think that would be much more fun. So have fun creating and making up games and going crazy within the rules. Hello. Today we're asking, how did that become this? How did that pile of junk become this object of beauty? How did your shared DNA and messed up life experiences give life to the funny, beautiful, intelligent children that you have? And how did the Old Testament become the New Testament? How and when did law become love? Let's be honest, there's plenty of Christians that struggle to reconcile the Old Testament with the New Testament. Jesus said, Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the slightest stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Wow, what did he mean? 
I mean, was Jesus saying he stood by every rule, regulation and law that we can find, say, in the books of Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy? I mean, just for example, Leviticus chapter 15 says, don't sit on a chair that a woman on her period has sat on within the last seven days. Leviticus chapter 11 says, don't eat certain birds such as eagles, red kites, ravens, cormorants, the screeched owl. Doesn't mention about other kind of birds. Deuteronomy 15, I like this one, says, if two men are fighting and one of them has a wife who intervenes to break up the fight and she grabs the private parts of the other man, then she should have her hand chopped off. I mean, is that the law that Jesus said he wasn't going to abolish but had come to fulfill? Then there's all the violence and the extreme punishments. Deuteronomy chapter 21 says, if a son persists in disobeying, disrespecting his parents, they can have their son taken out and stoned to death. I mean, had Jesus come to fulfill that law? And, and what about polygamy? Many of the heroes of the Old Testament had multiple wives at the same time. Was God okay with that? Was Jesus saying he stood by that too? Well, we've basically got two options. The first option is that God dictated word for word everything contained in the Old Testament, just as it is written. Everything that was said, everything that was written, everything that happened was all precisely as God designed. God wanted it to be. So when it says in Leviticus chapter 19, don't cut your sideburns, that's because if you want to live God's way, he was really saying, you got to have big sideies. Now, this first option says, all those rules, regulations, laws are just as God demands of us. He wants us with sideies. He definitely does not want you without sideies. you got to have big sideies if you want to be with God. Do not think I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. So grow your sides for the Lord, because every little detail, every little word contained in Leviticus, Deruta, many, and so forth, are all there precisely because that's exactly how God intended it. God wanted all these particular rules to be fulfilled, because that's the kind of God he is. The problem with that approach is it is hard to square with the life, ministry, the teaching of Jesus Christ. His kingdom of God agenda was not how big your sides are, it was love. Love God, love others, love yourselves. So what's the other option then? That's that the whole of the Bible is the spirit-inspired, unfolding story of God and us, his people. It's a collection of writings that trace humanity's growing, gradual realisation that there is more to life than this. That our story is part of a much bigger story, God's story. And it all begins as it ends with God. So Genesis, the beginnings, opens by saying, in the beginning, God. All that we see around us, what well, is beautiful, it's awe-inspiring. Such beauty and detail doesn't come out of nowhere. Everything has got to have a source, a beginning, a start. And what or whoever made all of this, well, they must be even more beautiful, even more powerful, even bigger than all of this. We surely owe our existence to whoever had made all of this, the maker, creator. And so we instinctively, as a human race, find ourselves saying thank you and wanting to do right by this maker, our creator. What's more, this creator seems really interested in what he has made, his creation. It's like he wants us to know him, to have relationship with him. So jump ahead to Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the issue of Sides. 
by now. Humanity was coming to realise that how we live matters to this God. Just as there is natural order, rhythm, structure in creation, so life itself just seems to go better when we people live together with some kind of order, rhythm, structure. It matters how we live, how we treat one another, how we show respect to God. In an age of lawlessness, as it was back then, when it was an eye for an optician, <laughs> a tooth for a dentist, the emerging law was radical. Now there's proportionality. At least restrict it, limit it to an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Live together in peace. Work for justice. Care for the poor. Be good stewards of creation. And when things go wrong between you, be reconciled to each other. How you live matters to God. And it also determines how well life goes for you. The law wasn't about sideburns are good and a number one shave around the side is bad there's a much much bigger story at play another word for law might be the way it's the way to know god it's the way to enjoy life as it was always intended how we were wired to be then fast forward again boom god revealed his way to us, widescreen, vivid colour in Jesus. Jesus, God the Son, God come in human form as one of us, was born as one of us. He's born in an unclean stable to a teenage unmarried mother, surrounded by unclean witnesses who worship without following the right kind of sacrifices. It was all wrong in so many different ways. And yet, reset the clock Start again. This is year zero. Jesus declared, that way, that's me. I am the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life. What you've been searching for, what you've been gradually working out over successive generations, well, that's me. I am the revelation. That way is me. It always was. Remember Genesis, in the beginning God, hence why John in his gospel begins, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Whether, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Jesus hadn't come to replace the Old Testament and its laws. He wasn't releasing God 2.0. You know, scrap the old format, here's the new release, and it's Jesus. Nor was he releasing a patch to fix the Old Testament code as if somehow there was a bug in it. Jesus was fulfilling the law in a way that that was always how it was meant to be. The way to God. The way to live well. Now, let's try something different. Think about Leonardo. Not Leonardo DiCaprio, and not Leonardo the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. We're talking Leonardo da Vinci, the 15th century Renaissance man. Leonardo was born after an affair between a wealthy Italian lawyer and a peasant girl. In fact, he had no surname. Da Vinci is not his surname. Da Vinci means of the town of Vinci. He had very little education, and yet Leonardo has become known as the most multi-talented human being possibly of all time. I mean, he's probably the most famous of all painters in history. Despite only 25 of his paintings currently existing, The Last Supper, The Mona Lisa, you know them. But he was also prolific in his investigations in science, anatomy and engineering. Do you know, in his notebooks, he drew pictures which we now realise were helicopters, parachutes, scuba diving gear, cranes, self-propelled cars. Leonardo was surely a man ahead of his time. We now take for granted much of what he saw intuitively. 
back in the 15th century. I'm not entirely sure he necessarily understood all the detail of what he was seeing, but he was onto something. He knew that there was something coming and it was bigger and better and more complicated and more detailed and would be more helpful. And we now have the benefit of that. Okay, so some of his detail was a bit shady, but he had nevertheless seen something. So in the same way, Jesus says the prophets who Jesus referred to, the likes of Abraham, Moses, Isaiah and so forth, they had seen something that others hadn't. They too were ahead of their time. They were looking through the mist of history and beginning to see something. It was blurred. They couldn't quite make out all the detail, but they knew that there was something coming. It was the way. And as successive generations built on each generation, so that foggy, misty, out of focus, blurry image of the way became sharper and sharper and sharper until finally, yes, here we go, boom, Jesus. The Pharisees talked a good talk. They talked all a lot about what it was to be holy. The problem is that Jesus could see right through them. He called them out and he said, you may talk the talk, but you don't walk the talk. They had so zoomed in on the nano detail of some of the previous generation's understandings that they'd lost sight of the bigger picture. They'd become so fixated with the letter of the law, or at least cherry picked a few of them, that they couldn't see the bigger picture, which was the way, the God way. Jesus was saying, is not so much the, the letter of the law, more the spirit of the law, the bigger picture. Oh, and by the way, that spirit, that's me, the spirit of Christ. So don't get stuck like the Pharisees in the micro detail or Leviticus, but also don't abolish it either because Leviticus and those kind of books, well, they're an accurate picture and a historical record of where we as humanity had got to at that time in our understanding and search for the way. God's progressive revelation. And you can trace it through the whole of scripture as it gets nearer and nearer and nearer to Jesus. And that image of Jesus becomes less blurry and sharper and sharper and sharper until that glorious morning when the God son is born in a stable. It's all fulfilled in Jesus because he is the way. Later, when an expert in the law tried to test Jesus, he asked, what's the greatest law? What's the most important law? Jesus' response, love God with everything you've got and love others as you love yourself. It's about love. The way is about love. That wasn't a new invention, a new idea. That's how it was always meant to be. That's why Jesus was summarizing what the expert in the law understood by the Old Testament scriptures. And Jesus summarizes them as love. That's what I've come to do, to fulfill, to complete for you what God had always intended and what was always there in the first place. But now you have it in flesh and blood before you, in me. I am the way. I am the way. I have come to fulfill that and I'm the truth and I am the life. Now for you Scrabble players who are always looking out for a big score, we talk about a Christocentric hermeneutic. Those are very posh, long, big score words for simply saying we interpret the whole of scripture through the revelation of Jesus. The word made flesh. The word is not the law or even the Bible. The word is Jesus. He is the way, the truth and the life. So if you want the fullest way to live, the best way to live as you were always wired to live, it is to live God's way, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, who was not an afterthought, a patch, or a 2.0 release, but right from the very outset, before the beginning of time, was always God's agenda, the kingdom of God agenda for you. Follow him 
and his way. Let's pray. God, thank you that you have made such beauty around us. It makes our spines tingle at times when we see the beauty and the detail of your creation. Lord, it reminds us that we are part of such a bigger story. Your story. Thank you, Lord, that you have not left us from a distance, but instead you want friendship, relationship with us. That's amazing. Lord, lead us in your way. Thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to show us the way, to be the way. That the destination is Jesus. That the life is Jesus. Lord, help us to turn again to you and your ways, to live your way. Lord, help us to look up beyond simply the micro detail of individual letters of the law. Fill us with your spirit that we might embrace the spirit of the law, your way, to live in partnership, in relationship with you. Thank you that you did not abolish what had been started but you have come to complete what God had already intended wonderful Jesus thank you we honor you we pledge our life to you again in your name Lord Jesus amen <laughs>
continue to give to the mission and ministry of Chester Road Baptist Church. Visit chesterroadbaptist.org.uk forward slash give to find out more information on how you can give now. God, thank you for the amazing work that you do in our lives each and every day. Thank you for the many blessings that you bring to our lives daily. Lord, we know that not all the time are we obedient to your word, but we are grateful that we can return to you time and time again as we seek your forgiveness. Lord, as your word says, we should seek to practice and teach others your ways so that we can be called great in the kingdom of God. Father, please help us as we strive to be an example for others to follow. Let your light shine from us in our various places of abode, work and school. Lord, thank you for your love and care that you bless us with in our walk with you. Lord, forgive us when we forget to give you the glory for our daily accomplishments. We are thankful for your mercy. Help us to keep our eyes on you as we seek to bring honor to your name. 
Father Jesus, please put your arms around those children who have gone back to school this past week and for those of us who go back in the weeks to come. Please guide and protect us and those around us, in particular our parents, teachers, friends and the family. Please keep us all away from harm of any nature. Father, renew our spirits and fill us all with peace and joy. Lord, we would like to pray for those amongst us who are in need of your special touch in their lives. We would like to lift up Helen, Joy, Kath, Clifford, Don and Joyce, Jazz, Jesse, Joyce, Mike, and Paul. Lord, please provide for them in whatever way they need. Shower them with your abundant love and grace. Finally, Lord, we thank you for our church leaders, Danny, Liz, and Caris, as well as the many volunteers that continue to uplift your name and are good stewards. We are grateful that we are part of the Chester Road Baptist Church family and your world, worldwide family. We pray especially for all the key workers in our family around the world, that you will continue to renew their strength, they will run and not grow weary, and that they will walk and not grow faint. In your name we pray, Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, blessed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> um, welcome to my house group. Oh, it's Ewan's house group. <laughs> Other people are allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we meet on a Wednesday um, evening on the first and the third Wednesdays of the month. And uh, we meet in a variety of different ways. Some people in person, such Hello. as me, <laughs> and Ruth and Lindsay. And then some people, as you can see, virtually via the power of That's the internet. Rebecca there. You Rebecca missed, is missed there. Away, <laughs> and then um, what we meet about is um, currently we... Um, discuss um, the service notes that Danny happily puts up on the internet and we have also followed the Lent course that the church has followed <laughs> and why do we meet um, we meet to um, share God's word to share follow fellowship and to support each other in both prayer and um, helping each other sort of during the week via the wonders of whatsapp okay thank you
Well, that pretty much wraps up our service today. It's been great to have you with us. If you've got questions, you want to pick up anything that I've said, then by all means, get onto our website, chesterroadbaptist.org.uk, go to the About Us section, and you'll find details for both me, uh, Karis, and also Liz as well. Uh, drop us a line. We would love to hear from you. Later on today, we're going to be having our on-site service, Breathe. It's contemplative, it's Celtic, and from today, it's also communion as well. Uh, that's four o'clock at um, B73 5HU in our um, Chester Road Baptist Church building. You'd be very welcome. Finally, why don't you join us later on for uh, tea, coffee in the, um, in the coffee lounge on Zoom. It'd be great to connect with you and just to have a bit of a natter. So this week then, go and pursue the way, the truth and the life that is Jesus Christ. Allow your life to be wrapped up in his so that you live your life according to his way this week. It is the best way. Enjoy.